Uh, dear noble DF men, it seems that by and large, machine learning is seen as a terrible tool for evil <laughs> in creating assets, etc. Of course it has and will continue to be misused as a corner cutting tool. Uh, but I feel the current sentiment of avoiding ML is harmful overall. Will the ever increasing dev time with the ever, ever increasing dev time and costs, ML is obviously a way to help reduce both. Of course, it needs to be used to augment and assist talented people, not replace them. But it seems each time someone is quote unquote caught using ML tools, there is uproar, exclamation point. From solo devs all the way up to AAA studios, should we not try and be a little less judgmental when machine learning is deployed? Oliver, you're obviously all in on uh, machine learning, or so you're certainly <laughs> following its path, um, yes. which is, you know, the trajectory is frankly stratospheric. I'm curious about your take on this, because from my perspective, you can't put a genie back in the bottle. And, you know, machine learning tools do represent progress. And to not use them, I think, is would, would be ridiculous, as long as they're used responsibly uh, and for quality results. Um, but at the same time, there have been some notable examples where these tools have been used and producing crappy results. Uh, where do you draw yeah. the line? So to me, I think there are two questions here. The first is a question about games, and the second is a question about people. So I think on the game side, you really do want to make games in a more efficient manner. You do want to make games more quickly. You do want to produce bigger games fewer people, like I think those are all goals that people can see are probably a good thing. Um, and I think generative AI is potentially a great tool for that in terms of making that production process more efficient. We're all concerned about games that require 400 people to work on them for six years, right? We're all concerned about games that require 15 million in sales to clear, clear a, a profit to break even. You know, I think those are all big problems. And I think across the economy and across sectors and certainly the games industry, you can see this potentially as a tool to, to help alleviate that problem. And I, I think it is something that we should see ultimately in that narrow respect, obviously, as a good thing. On the other side, I think you have a question about people. And I think the answer is, is different and, and harder. So I think one answer to that question could be that you have an unsated demand for games that could be made with smaller teams made more efficiently with generative AI, AI, so you could absorb developers that might suffer from, you know, some employment consequence as a result of generative AI, AI being applied in AAA games. Like for instance, you know, I would love to play arcade racing games, big arcade racing games. I'd love to play them. Unfortunately, they don't make very many of them, you know, um, obviously they have the Forza Horizon games, but outside of that, there's like Grid Legends, which is kind of Sim Katy released in 2022. You have Dirt 5 released in 2020. That's probably the last really big, super arcadey handling game that I can recall um, enjoying and playing. I really enjoyed that game a lot. Uh, if you could build games like that with fewer staff and not need to clear some stratospheric sales threshold because you have 150 people on salary and make them, I think that's very promising. Um, but on the other hand, if you're looking at persistent and heavy unemployment across sectors or within certain segments of the industry, that's a, a problem, I think, for government to take a look at. I think it's something you're not going to see a resolution to in the labor market if you're just having people who can't find work because their role has been eff effectively replaced. So I, I think there are a couple things. Obviously, I'd like to stress, like enormously, you know, especially in the wake of the past couple of years, like, you know, you have to have enormous sympathy for people who, who might be in this position, um, not in the games industry, but but everywhere indeed. And, and who might be suffering from issues because of that. But I, I think that there are separate approaches to looking at as a games industry problem, as a problem for the actual production of games. There, I think it's a an asset. I think it's a positive thing. But on the, on the people side, that needs a, a different kind of solution, I think. But I don't think the solution is to abandon generative AI, AI. I think it's a useful tool. I think machine learning is incredibly powerful. I don't want to abandon or see people abandoning machine learning as a tool just because it has some negative externalities on the other end that can be solved through other means. That's sort of my perspective on it, but obviously that's complex. And I understand that people have mm. very, very strong feelings. I mean, look at the comments section of the videos I produced on generative AI technologies here, and you'll certainly see that. So I'm very sympathetic to those those perspective perspectives, obviously, and, and I understand where they're coming from. Yeah, I mean, before we go to you, Alex, I mean, there are generative technologies that are not AI-based in nature that 
do practically that can have practically the same impact, you know, but at the same time can also uh, democratize um, particular technologies. I'm thinking of like procedural generation, uh, the new Unreal Engine 5 enhancements that were added with the new engine revision. They're basically, you know, using procedural generation to create open worlds, mm-hmm. you know, which, which, you know, developers can then embellish or not embellish. Uh, with uh, manual touch-up. I mean, that's not AI, but it's still uh, potentially, you know, reducing the amount of manpower needed for a job. But at the same time, what it's also doing is opening up these uh, types of experience to like independent game developers. You know, they can produce open worlds now with that. It's just uh, two different sort of sides of the coin, really. Where do you sit on this? Um, I, I like the way Oliver phrased it about, uh, negative externalities as well as, uh, because any sort of industry, any sort of profession is always in danger of being kind of, how do they say it? Like structurally unemployed. Uh, and it doesn't make it better. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone who worked at Kodak in any one of their variety of, um, kind of film production the felt it keenly when the digital camera came about, which Kodak, I think, invented even, funnily enough. Uh, so, you know, I think that there, that is always that danger where you can lose some job and it just can almost never come back into existence again because something else replaced it that is technologically more efficient and superior and therefore worth the time and money. That happens right. everywhere. But at the same time, I would really like to see fairness uh, approached in AI, at least for the generative model. So if a generative model is generated uh, by uh, scraping domains or or um, copyrighted materials, that I would like to see those people uh, compensated in on some aspect uh, of that. I would like to see that definitely because, you know, usually when you – put yourself out there as the current economy requires it, you are selling yourself. And I I think it would be good if people could get some compensation for that. In terms of the game development thing, I know that it is taking a big part right now in uh, concept art stage for games. I know that. Um, I also, we also see it in the generation of voice um, already been used in shipping titles. Uh, but it's hard to get around certain aspects right now, like model making is still very much so within the realm of humans. Uh, just making a level is still very much within the realm of what humans do. I think we've got a lot of time before those things uh, appre- appre- approach levels of automation where they're shippable at performant and ship them performant because a lot of a lot of these ai tools can cre- create a model actually uh but it'll have like vertices that just make no sense in terms of real time performance so or even quality concerns too so i think right now it's focusing on the equity and really using it for its best fit purpose like i there was a presentation last year at citizen con Uh, for Star Citizen, where they said, oh, so we've been handcrafting planets for a long time. There are rules of procedural generation there that we've created, but we are now looking into machine learned models to help us do it quicker uh, because making an entire planet by hand is hard. So yeah, I think there's really great uses for machine learning. Generative AI also has its uh, great uses, I imagine, as long as they're done equitably. 